Hey, today I've got a Michele Soavi horror film to review. It's from 1991. I'm talking about The Sect. It's a hybrid between a supernatural film and a full-on horror thriller. I'd like to share my thoughts on what makes The Sect a standout film in uh, Soavi's uh, filmography. Now, Michele Soavi that was his third feature film following Stage Fright and The Church. Just like The Church, The Sect was produced by Dario Argento. So his uh, influence is uh, felt in this project. And as you can see here on this nice uh, German media book, his name is actually on top above the director's name. And his name was uh, heavily used during the film's uh, promotion. What exactly did Dario Argento contribute to the sect? Uh, now, Michele Soavi has his own distinct uh, visual style and editing style, editing aesthetic. He's uh, an Argento disciple, but he's got his own uh, identity. So some plot elements were supplied by Dario Argento. Apparently he had insisted on the prologue. The thing with the sect is it's quite sloppy when it comes to plot. It takes ages to meet the protagonist. We're at least 15 minutes into the film, maybe longer before we even meet our nominal protagonist. That's a young school teacher played by Kelly Curtis. That's uh, Tony Curtis's daughter and Jamie Lee Curtis's uh, sister. Kelly Curtis plays Miriam and she's this vulnerable young uh, person who is uh, pursued by this, by this strange satanic cult led by Herbert Lom, who you might remember from uh, The Dead Zone or from just Franco's uh, Candracula, for example, or from the Pink Panther films. The sect is visually a sumptuous, sumptuous production. If films were 100% about visuals, then the sect would have been one of the best films of the 90s hands down it's gorgeous and there are some daring shots some roving steadicam some uh, macro shots which to this day look quite quite impressive and back then they must have been really extremely uh, just uh, dazzling for people to see Michele Suavi has his stamp all over the film aesthetically there are those uh, dream sequences they really channel some mysticism and some uh, supernatural uh, atmosphere which works in film's favor. Going back to the plot, uh, we start with this prologue which is in, in set in the desert and Thomas Arana pops up as this uh, wild man who walks out of the desert and stumbles upon this hippie uh, camp and they, they take him in and then his buddies arrive, some evil bikers and they start slaughtering those uh, peaceful hippies and that's just the prologue and the relevance of that I'm not sure I grasp that but his character does come back years later but it's it's a mess. Pino Donaggio did the score. Pino Donaggio is when you think Pino Donaggio you think Brian De Palma. This time he's uh, been uh, working on this Dario Argento production and he has a very different sound. It's a very electronic sound. It's almost all keyboard. I don't think this score rates very highly among fans, but I personally appreciate it. It's not a standout. It's not gonna blow you away. But when I think about the sect, I start humming that, that, uh, that tune. Speaking about violence, uh, the sect is a horror film and there is, for example, a face ripping. A person has like many hooks inserted into their uh, skin and their face ripped clean off, which is, uh, I guess, uh, reminiscent a little bit of the Hellraiser. And there is a few dead bodies, and I'm sure there is a stabbing or two, and there is a person on fire, so there is action, there are deaths. There is extremely stylish uh, sequences where it's like a bit of slow motion, some beautiful steadicam, an occasional wild zoom. It's extremely tastefully filmed, but I wouldn't call it an, a very violent film, and I don't think the sect will score very highly with gore fans, people who like the demons movies, Lambetta Bava's demons, or people who like Fulci, they will not find this wet, sloppy gore in the sect. The sect is quite, 
relatively subtle for an Italian film. I mentioned Kelly Curtis and Herbert Lom in the cast. There is lots of cult actors and supporting roles in the set. There is plenty of them. Starting with Mariangela Giordano, probably best known for sleazy movies she made for producer Crisanti, movies like Burial Ground, Patrick Still Lives, Giallo Venezia. Then she made those non non-splitation, I guess, non-splitation films such as uh, Malabimba. Satan's Baby Doll, that's Mariangela Giordano. So she has that sleazy pedigree and you see her in a supporting role in the sect and she keeps her clothes on, which is unusual. And she plays a slightly more, um, I guess you could say she's a slightly more mumsy character. But she ends up also uh, going out on a very uh, wild note when, when her character becomes sort of possessed. It's interesting. She has an interesting part. There are some quality practical effects, courtesy of Sergio Stivaletti. There is no CGI in the sect. It's all optical effects or practical effects. So if you're into that kind of cinema, the film is highly recommended. It's if you're a budget filmmaker, I think movies like the sect, those Italian movies from mid 80s, early 90s, they could be textbooks on how to wring the most out of practical effects. Obviously in the States there would be CGI revolution, but the Italians were still not equipped for that. They were way behind. So they would do their best to provide the best makeup, the best possible gore to try and compete. And unfortunately, by the time the sect came about, there was very little demand for that sort of artisan-made horror genre anymore. So I don't think it fared as well in the international markets as some previous films. I don't think it made as much money as the church or the demon movies, absolutely not. And the sect does not enjoy the reception that the demons film films have. The sect is a bit more highbrow. You have to realize Michele Suavi always uh, deliberately tried to distance himself a little bit from the demons franchise in which he was involved as assistant director. He always wanted to make do his own thing make his own contributions, which would be like in the case of the sect, they would be inspired by uh, old German uh, fairy tales, which he was uh, uh, obsessed with at the time. Another cult actor who has a nice supporting part in the sect is Giovanni Lombardo Radice, John Morgan from Cannibal Ferox, Gates of Hell, Cannibal Apocalypse. He's very cool in the sect. He's in one of those opening sequences which don't really make much sense in the general context of the story, but those are almost self-contained short films which are immensely cool and add to the film's overall weird feeling of anything goes. He's this cult member and we see him in the, in the metro train and there are some punks and they're trying to pickpocket him and then they pull out this ripped out fresh human hut from his pocket and then he goes goes off running, then there is a uh, police after him. It's all set, meant to be set in West Germany. And there is people in sort of a green German police uniform from the 80s. So the sect has this nice pan-European feel about it. It's an Italian production, which uh, they shot a few days in, in Germany around uh, Frankfurt and mixed the footage with some pickups uh, shot in Rome. So it has that very nice sort of uh, North European, pseudo North European ambience, even though it was only partially made in Germany. There is uh, also um, the actor from Zombie Holocaust, from Dr. Butcher MD, the, the, the psycho surgeon, Dr. Butcher, Dr. Brero, the Irish actor Donald O'Brien is also in the sect, but you have to be really, you have to pay attention to spot him because he's just on TV for a few seconds. The way Marino Massey is on TV in Dario Gento's Tenebrae, for example. The Sect is a movie you may not like the first time around. It takes a while to get into it. I remember watching for the first time thinking, what the hell was that? It's such a mess, especially if you don't get to see a good quality copy. If you maybe watch a rubbish uh, rip from YouTube, it might completely escape you what, what's, what's the beauty of this film. But on repeat viewings, if you allow yourself some time to digest and revisit the sect, 
I think you're in for a very rewarding experience. You can, you can sort of navigate the film a little bit by interpreting uh, things as you please, because there is not such a tight narrative uh, construct there. It's just a series of extremely eerie and beautiful sequences tied together by an approximate storyline of this Kelly Curtis's character uh, bringing about the child of sa Satan into the world and being pursued by this sinister sect. So it's a very derivative story, yet, yet the way it is presented is nothing short of magnificent and original. It's a challenging film, yet it has many delights for those who are maybe not into just straight gore and bang 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 action, but it's more for people who like a little bit of philosophy in the films or a little bit of uh, culture with their, with their horror, with their shocks. The sect is definitely a little bit cut above your average gory Italian uh, commercial offering. I personally uh, think it's a little bit less sophisticated than The Church, but both films have uh, their own identities and both films are extremely valuable and represent a very interesting mutation Italian cinema was undergoing as a transition from the glory gory 1980s towards the TV-oriented uh, 1990s when the cinema gave way completely to TV and uh, cable production.